This program was made possible by contributions to the Good Enough For Me Patreon by viewers just like you. Thank you. Can you imagine owning a piece of plastic that doesn't do anything? Yeah, me too. That's why today on Good Enough For Me, we are taking a look at a couple of PS3 titles that I never got to experience, but I'm sure other people did. We're only taking a look at the classics today. Uh, of course, on our handy dandy Steam Deck. How do you feel about running PS3 games today, buddy? God, I have to be Imagine a dark, hellish city devoid of people after thousands have left or died or disappeared. Only the animals are left to fend for themselves against other fucking animals and lions and zebras and all that other shit. Imagine what animal you then would be playing as. Believe it or not, this fucking section took me like seven tries to figure out what it wanted me to do. And it's not just because I don't know fucking Japanese, it's... It doesn't have any button prompts until you absolutely need to. I didn't think I'd be playing as a Pomeranian, but actually you get to play as multiple other house animals. You get to slaughter the local rabbit population with, with cats and then play as some sort of basset hound and hunt hyenas and shit. And really, it feels kind of like a character action game where you dodge and you do combos and shit, and you got a health meter and you eat all on one singular street. And if there's any other streets in Tokyo, well, then I, bad news because we're not going to visit them. You have to fight three hyenas as a small dog. It's really impressive, actually, because you whittle down the enemy's fucking health and then you click the kill button for a kill move. Holy shit. You lucky motherfucker. Okay, let's roll. 50 Cent Blood in the Sand is a game with a lot of heart. Looks like I'm in charge. You a crazy bitch, you know that? That's my kind of girl. It's the classic story of a man on a mission to reclaim what's his. And in this case, the MacGuffin is a skull of a dead lady of some warring socio-political conflict in the Middle East. And only 50 Cent and his crew of people I don't recognize can finally stop this conflict. They will use any methods to succeed, including unique shooting mechanics that for some reason use bumpers and not triggers not sprinting, and cutscenes that are truly the pinnacle of the era that they came out in. That bitch has got my skull, and I want it back. Truly, AAA gaming at its finest. I'm sure this game can work well on Steam Deck, as it's being played here, and you can see the frame graph as well. It's actually quite surprising, but I've spent a lot of time in this week trying to get it to work better, to mostly no effect. You can expect between 27 and 60 frames a second. However, if you were looking to get a little more performance out of it, you, you might, you could maybe do it. I guess what I'm trying to say is about 50 Cent Blood in the Sand is that it's probably the PS3's best non-exclusive multi-plat title. When the fuck is the Nintendo Switch port coming out? We can start over. You want crazy bitch. The Common Rider series for a lot of people outside of Japan is a acquired taste. You kind of have to understand what this show is giving you in order to really appreciate it. Now for me, I just love the cool costumes. I love that there's these big muscular grasshopper men riding motorcycles. It's just incredible. It's just full of great moves. It's got all the Common Riders, I, probably like 30 or, or more years up to this point of just playable characters and sidekicks and such. The story isn't super great, especially since I can't read Japanese. And that's okay though, because it makes up for it in being just fucking badass. And let me go ahead and show you a scene real quick. It's gonna make you bust. It makes me bust every time I do this three times within a, within a mission. There's 
Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. What are you guys from the truth, dude? Get off! You know, they say media property shouldn't go past a certain amount of seasons. For me, Family Guy is, well, it exists, and I don't have any other opinions other than that it, it does currently still air. This game, another tie-in published licensed title, features Brian and Stewie as they travel across the multiverse of madness and do odd jobs and commit heinous acts at colleges and all that sort of thing, desperately trying to stop the multiversal villain Orange Haired Johnson from, well, d he's doing vague bad guy things and that's pretty much all I, all I know about it. Stewie is just full of movie references that will repeat uh, ad nauseum, and Brian is exactly the way he is on TV. There's not really much to it. They're not deep characters. If you want development, you're going to have to watch the actual Family Guy show. The environments, goddamn, they look like they're straight out of the TV show, although I do find it to be a little bit, little bit weird the way that they, all the characters look in 3D. It doesn't always translate super well. However, as you can see, there's a lot of love and care put into all these enemies. They all look incredibly different. Does this game run good on deck? Yeah, for the most part, I would say that it's a little hard to get it running though because there are particular settings you need to sort of adjust and every time you boot it up, you might have to reboot it two or three times to get it to work. It's unfortunately just sort of the PS3 emulation scene that you gotta dick around with the settings to make things work. Who is this game for? Let me go ahead and, and, and let you in on a little secret. This game is for anyone who's a Family Guy lore fanatic. Uh, the 12-year-old in your family is going to love it. The 35-year-old in your basement is going to love it. They're all going to love it because it's just jam-packed with Family Guy references, fantastic gameplay, and an experience that you're just not going to find anywhere else. Now, I say this is a fantastic PS3 multiplat and definitely a game you should pick up legally to emulate, but saying that would be a disservice to how fantastic this title is. If I was giving it a number score, I wouldn't, purely because I don't think a number would be able to encapsulate the fantastic, wonderful finesse at which this game is able to pull off through its art direction, its voice acting, its references, and its characters, which really are the essential part of the Family Guy franchise. It seems today that all you see is violence and movies and sex on TV. But where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? Lucky there's a Family Guy. <laughs> You know what they say, those were definitely some PS3 games running on the Steam Deck, no doubt about that. Hopefully our little heart-to-heart -heart talk from me to you give you a little bit of nostalgia. You know, back to the era of when Mountain Dew was king and the current year was but a flicker in the distance. Sometimes it feels like we're already living in the good old days. Man, uh... I was in a pool that same day, with a pool noodle being used to drink water and pretend I was an elephant. I was then shot 72 times by the police for owning illegal copies of 50 Cent. I don't have time to drink water. I'm a businessman. Zoom into the dick. I'll be sleeping in the bathroom tonight. No more 42 inch cheese pizza, please. I'm begging you upon my knees. Lesson learned now I can see. One slice is good enough for me. 